going on Refuilders? This is Jake Adams and earlier this year I had the chance to spend a significant amount of time at the Top Shelf Aquatics Coral Farm. Now I know a lot of folks have visited before and you've seen some of my own videos from their nursery of coral production but I got to spend a whole afternoon in the farm by myself and I was really able to immerse myself in all the corals that they grow and keep and enjoy and appreciate a lot of the same corals across different tanks where their colony shape might be a little different. And uh, there's a lot of corals that grabbed my attention, a lot of SPS, a lot of Acros, Montes, Poslaporas, and Acroporas, and tons and tons of different corals in between. But for this video, I really want to share with you the top 10 Acropora colonies that got my attention. So mind you, these are not like their quote unquote best strains of all time. These are just the colonies that were large enough for me to really, really appreciate. And it's really important to point out that, you know, I go out of my way to really uh, make corals look their best under natural daylight spectrum. Um, so if you like these corals under this natural lighting, you surely will enjoy them even more with a little touch of blue. And also keep in mind, these are all uh, production colonies, right? These are for farming. So when you look at these corals, it's not necessarily the perfect exact natural shape you might experience in your aquarium, because these colonies are used for profit. So if you look closely, you can see a lot of places where branches have been freshly cut or healed over or grown back a little funky from the propagation. So without further ado, let's jump into my favorite Acropora colonies from the Top Shelf Aquatics Coral Farm. First up, we have the Green Dragon Acropora. So for those of you that have been collecting some of these deep water style Acroporas, you may have noticed that the name Dragon has been come to be used on a wide range of different Acroporas that are generally considered to be lower light, a little bit smooth skinned with an open thin branch branching pattern and a bottle brush colony shape. This all started with the original Red Dragon Acro almost 20 years ago. And now it has come to describe a real wide range of corals that can be anywhere from mauve to bluish to green with colored tips. And this one is the Green Dragon. And this one really grabbed my attention because I grow a lot of different dragon style Acroporas. Um, but this one is a little bit thicker in overall appearance with a little bit of a smoothness to the tips that is not the same as some of the other dragons that I grow. But if you see any coral that generally looks like this, you can uh, usually assume that it is gonna be a very fast growing coral, uh, pretty hardy, not very demanding in terms of light requirements or flow requirements. And it's a great Acropora to get started with, um, especially if you've never grown any Acros before. Here we have the TSA Fruity Splice Acro, which originally began life as a beautiful tabling Acropora with a red burgundy color, even deeper red polyps, and a bright yellow orange accent to the axial and radial core lights. But no doubt what put this coral on our radar are the bold patches of green fluorescent protein that have begun infecting this particular strain of the coral. Now infection sounds like a bad term, but that's pretty much what Zoxanthellae does. And we don't totally understand the mechanism by which corals can um, adopt new pigments, but we've generally called it either a grafting or an infection. And a coral farmer really needs to manage the balance of those two colors so that not one or the other becomes dominant. So frags of this coral are extremely limited. Um, the base color is really awesome to begin with. So uh, we look forward to seeing more colonies of this coral in the future. Next up is the Candlelight Stag Acropora. 
Now when I first saw this coral, I thought it really closely resembled the purple plasma Acropora horida, except the candlelight has a much more open branching shape and structure. So the overall color is kind of a purplish mauve base with light greenish uh, polyps and uh, brighter tips like you expect in most Acroporas. And if it's anything like the Acropora harida, this should be a hardy, fast growing coral. It might not be the boldest, brightest coloration, but when it gets some size, it has just a really attractive, elegant colony shape. And that's one of the secondary things that we really appreciate about Acroporas when they're grown out and show a really nice shape and overall form to the colony. Now we're just thankful that TSA left the species name on this particular staghorn. This is the Exquisita staghorn. These corals are commonly farmed, but they don't necessarily adapt to captivity very well. And it's a, a challenging coral to really capture because it has a deep purple blue coloration with a bright green rim to all the coralites. And it grows into a semi staghorn shape. So the shape is staghorn overall, but it still has a little bit of that residual uh, tortuosa branchiness. So here's a good example where you can see how the constant fragging has created a really dense branching pattern to this particular Acropora exquisita. If you haven't grown this coral, it'll definitely look the best in some pretty bright light and strong flow. And uh, those colors are really easy to keep, especially at the tips. Here we have one of the oldest and most famous Acropora strains of all time, the Garf Bonsai. This strain has been growing in captive aquariums for over 20 years and it has a non-stop solid purple base coloration with neon green polyps and the branches get a little bit brighter at the tips. This was once one of the most popular Acroporas that you could grow in an aquarium because it really, really looks its best under daylight lighting where the pink and purple coloration can really shine through. If you keep this coral under bluish light, you'll be left with kind of a dark coral and a starry night of green polyps. But no matter how you grow it, this is a fast growing hardy coral that everyone should keep in their stony coral growing career. Now, when I first looked at the Sour Patch, I didn't know that this was a different strain, although it did appear slightly different from the Garf Bonsai, and I'm glad I took the time to document it, because in talking with TSA, this is a unique strain of theirs called the Sour Patch. So it doesn't branch nearly as much as the Garf Bonsai. The branches are thicker, and the polyps are closer together and brighter green. But if you like the really bold combination of a purple color with green polyps. This looks like a fun addition. And since I've grown the Garf Bonsai many times, I think I'll be looking out for some pieces of Sour Patch to add to my collection. I'm sure you've seen many photographs of the Walt Disney Tenuous, but there's much fewer videos of this coral that aren't completely blown out with orange filters and blue light. So even under daylight spectrum with no filters whatsoever, when you get the Walt Disney Acropora Tenuous really, really happy, it is an amazing coral. No saturation and no filter required to really make this coral pop. One thing I will say is there's a big difference between a 
Walt Disney Tenuous that is growing and one that is simply thriving. Once you get a Tenuous Coral like the Walt Disney in real prime of health with lots of vitality and really excerpt polyp, the coral just transforms from something completely different. So I don't have any troubles keeping the Walt Disney uh, Tenuous growing, but I do find it challenging sometimes to achieve this level of uh, color representation in a small frag or colony. Next up, we have another classic Acropora. This is the frog skin Acro that originally came from ORA. Now, I know the green is not the most popular color when it comes to the SPS Coral Keepers, but the frog skin is a really hardy, reliable Acropora that when given enough room, will splay out into a beautiful kind of expansive colony shape um, as you see here and it is really reminiscent of kind of a thinner branching acropora austera of which there are many different strains it's uh, really refreshing to see a coral like the acropora the frog skin acro um, be given the room to grow out like this it's not quite as neon green as uh, a bali green slimer but it's still a very nice fluorescent jade or forest green that is um, what I like to call a complementary coral color to some of the uh, more all-star corals like your Walt Disney Tenuous. So if you haven't grown this coral before, this is a really fun one to add to your collection. Now you might notice I'm showing off a lot of classic Acropora strains such as this Paletta Pink Tip. And that's because a lot of these have kind of fallen by the wayside into tiny little frags where you don't get to appreciate the overall colony shape. So it was really refreshing to see just a large mature colony at the TSA Coral Farm that shows the characteristic color and pattern of this species. Now, not every pink tip is a lineaged Paletta strain. This is a very common coral from the wild. But Paletta really helped to popularize this strain by sharing it in the late 90s and early 2000s. And uh, it's again, it's not the most fluo coral you've ever seen, but the bright uh, pink tips with green polyps and green base is something that just grabs your attention from across the room. This is an awesome confidence booster for people who are starting out in uh, SPS corals because it's hardy, fast growing, and you don't have to have too large of a colony to enjoy the overall shape of this coral. So again, another classic Acropora species, which should be um, pretty affordable to get your hands on and it won't be a tiny genetic sample. It should be a very fair uh, piece and like you, you can see here, Top Shelf Aquatics has a respectable colony from which to uh, produce their frags. corals featured in this video, the firecracker has to be one of my total favorites. This coral has a saturated pink coloration all throughout the colony that is peppered with small neon green polyps. It has a green accent to the radial and axial core lights. And under brighter light, you can see a little bit more of a lavender lilac coloration appearing in the fast growing tips. One thing I really enjoy about this coral is that you don't have to blast it with light in order to get this phenomenal coloration. It will look really, really good under moderately bright lights. And this is a coral that really looks awesome, um, whether you keep it in a very high energy environment 
or a moderately uh, strong flow and highlight environment. So this is a coral that is really approachable for a lot of people, really attractive under daylight spectrum as well as mostly blue light. You can see it's got a lot of fluorescence going on. And uh, I think this is one of the, the best st strains or the most striking Acropora strains in the catalog of corals from Top Shelf Aquatics. I'm going to show you a lot more corals from the TSA coral farm, but the last one I'm going to tell you about is the iconic Oregon Blue Tort. This coral has been kicking around the reef aquarium hobby for a good two decades and there is still not to this day a coral that is deeper and bluer colored than this particular Acropora. Um, if you haven't grown this coral, again, it's not going to look as really great under blue light, but under bright white daylight spectrum, it'll be one of the brightest colors in your aquarium and it is a bold blue so i hope you enjoyed the rest of the corals in this video i don't know too much about them but i'm gonna let the video speak for itself